Imperialism is a policy of taking colonies in foreign places for economic or other interests. Um, another example would be military interests. Think for a minute about why we would take colonies in foreign places. Some of the reasons for imperialism are that one, other world powers were building empires. Jingoism is extreme patriotism through foreign policy. So you could think of it as patriotism or nationalism, only it is that exercised in other countries or foreign places. Two, the U.S. also needed new markets for our products. We had a case where we were producing more goods than we could possibly use. So we needed new markets, new places to sell our goods. In a sphere of influence, we have indirect political, economic, or military control over another country. A third reason for imperialism is to civilize the uncivilized and spread Christian ideals. We had come to believe in this country that Christian ideals were the most civilized way to live. People like Josiah Strong emphasized this, writing White Man's Burden. It's a poem about supporting imperialism and stresses the duty of Americans to civilize the uncivilized by spreading Christian ideas. Frederick Jackson Turner was a U.S. historian who in 1893 wrote an essay called The Significance of the Frontier in American History, and these ideas he used to form the Frontier Thesis. In this essay, he argued that the expansion of the U.S. and the frontier shaped American democracy and character. Historians agree that the Frontier Thesis has had an enormous impact on historical scholarship in the American mind. In other words, the ideas of expansion and broadening the frontier of the United States became part of the American identity. In 1867, the United States purchased Alaska. This purchase was called Seward's Folly because it was seen as a mistake by most Americans. The land was thought to be a worthless icebox. And um, it was being purchased from Russia for two cents an acre. Very cheap. Of course, this land ended up being very valuable. It was initially purchased because we thought that we could possibly um, extend the frontier into the American frontier into Canada, which was, of course, being um, governed by the British. So it was more of a military acquisition than it was anything else. However, as soon as we purchased Alaska, Britain gave Canada its sovereignty. So we no longer had um, a reason to use Alaska as a strategic military location. Also, um, in Hawaii, we um, overthrew the Queen of Hawaii, Queen Liliakalani, um, and that happened uh, in the late 1800s. And in 1898, um, President McKinley agreed to annex Hawaii. Hawaii was actually overthrown while Harrison was president, um, and he appealed to Congress to annex Hawaii and was turned down. So nothing happened while Harrison was president. Uh, Cleveland came along right after him and um, he actually apologized for overthrowing Hawaii. He apologized to the Hawaiians um, and said that what we did was reprehensible or terrible. Part of the reason um, that we thought that Hawaii would be a good acquisition was not only for commercial purposes, for um, the products that came out of Hawaii, such as sugar and pineapple, but also because we could use it as a naval base. At about this time, Al Alfred Mahon came out with a book called The Influence of Sea Power Upon U.S. History, and it was an argument um, that said that basically 
um, in order to be a world power, you had to have a strong navy. Um, and so we realized that we needed naval bases around the world in order to make that possible. In the next video, we'll talk about how U.S. imperialism quickly led to war.